All right, welcome to chapter nine. We are gonna be talking about differential equations here. Uh, differential equations are one of those things that pop up all the time in engineering and physics. And all it basically means is that we have um, an equation that needs to be solved that has not only a function of x, but it has x, a function of x, and the derivative of a function of x, and eight in, at even higher levels that we're not gonna get into, um, multiple derivatives of, of, um, of y, which is a function of x. And so what we're gonna see is equations with y and y prime buried in with functions of x. Now we have solutions to these differential equations, which is satisfied here. Now, one of the things I wanna point out just real quick, if I have 4x plus 3 equals 2x plus 5, and we were to solve this, subtract the 2x, subtract the 3, and so on, we would end up that the solution to this equation is 1. And you can see when you plug in 1, 4 plus 3 is 7, 2 plus 5 is 7. And it works. And what we're going to be doing for this first section is not solving differential equations, but saying, hey, once we have a solution, how do we know it's a solution? And like I just did when I plugged in the one here and here, we could solve that. Likewise, we could say y prime equals 2xy when y is equal to e to the x squared. And what we can see is when I take the derivative of that, I'm gonna get e to the x squared, that's y, right? times x, the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So we can kind of get this idea using calculus that we can have a solution and we can show that it's a solution by working backwards, just like we did with the simple algebraic equation here. Um, now solving uh, general differential equations is more or less not easy. Uh, the examples we're gonna do in this particular course are going to be relatively simple and easy to solve but in real life, um, many of them are difficult to, uh, to solve and we have to resort to other techniques to solve that. Let's jump into it with example one here. Show that every member of the family of functions, y, and then we see the function here, is a function of t. Now the c that you see here is the result of solving this differential equation, this one here, and we end up with an integration and we end up with a plus c like we'd normally do when we integrate. And that's what that C is, that, that's sort of where that comes from. And so what we're gonna do is I'm going to take the derivative of Y, clean it up a little, and then I'm gonna take Y and dump that into there, clean that up a little and show that they are the same, meaning the left side equals the right side. So let's start with the derivative. And this is uh, the quotient rule. So it's the derivative of the top with respect to t. So that's going to be c e to the t times the bottom or the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator. That's gonna be negative c e to the t times the numerator all divided by the denominator squared. So let's clean this up a little. Up top, I'm gonna to do the distributive property. That becomes plus. And in the denominator, Of that. Okay, so we end up with c squared e to the 2t negative and positive c squared e to the 2t. Those reduce out or cancel out, as it were. And I end up with two of these. Oop, that's a minus, not a plus. Minus c e to the t squared. So that's the left-hand side. Now let's try the right-hand side. Split that open a little. 
And it says, I'm gonna take one half, y squared, now here's y. squared minus one. All right, so let's play with that a little bit. Up top, I'm going to multiply that out. Make the 2t. I mean, I'm going to keep the denominator the same. I'm going to notice it's the same here. Okay, one minus C e to the T. And I'm just going to leave it squared down there. And then minus one uh, squared minus one. So let's combine that up. And I'm going to get a common denominator here. And here's the common denominator. I'm going to actually FOIL that out. That's c squared e to the 2t. So let's write that out. All right, so we're going to end up with 1 plus 2c e to the t plus c squared e to the 2t. Now I'm going to distribute that negative. That's going to be minus 1 plus 2c e to the t minus c squared e to the 2t all over our common denominator. And very nicely, I'm going to notice that the ones are gone. These two are like terms and these completely go away. I have a minus one there and a positive one there. So we end up with 2CE to the T plus 2CE to the T. That's gonna be 4CE to the T. And the one half is gonna reduce out. And you can see they're the same. There they are. So this really is a solution to this. This is a solution. This is a solution to this differential equation. And the C in there can be anything. Uh, that's one of the nice things about differential equations. If it's convenient to choose a C, we can choose a C. Um, in other cases, we're going to end up with an initial value problem. And what that means is we want to use a specific C by given some sort of initial um, condition here. So here's this here, and we're gonna find a solution to this. We already know the solution to this. We, because it's the same as the previous problem. So our solution is gonna be this here. But what we want to do is we wanted it to satisfy our initial condition when x equal, and to be clear, this is when x equals zero, when y equals two, or y equals two when x equals zero, however we want to, to view that particular issue. And so what we're going to do is, um, uh, not xt, t is our domain in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, set t to zero, and we're going to set y to two. And hopefully we can solve for c. Now e to the zero is one. 
So we end up with this nice piece here. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply through by the common denominator. That's the one minus C. end up with one equals three C, which means C is one third. Now, what does that mean for us? That means our specific solution is here. And just to clean it up a little, I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by three. There is our specific solution that satisfies the initial condition y of zero equals two. Not too bad. Again, other videos we will actually be solving for a differential equation. These ones we're just verifying for now. All right. So for our next problem, it says verify that y equals negative t cosine t minus t is a solution to this initial value problem. So I'm gonna start with the left-hand side, which means I need to find dy dt, which is y prime for as far as we're concerned. So here I have the product rule. Minus one. Now we got a lot of negatives going on here. And we need to be sort of extra careful here. So it was, I have one too many negatives in here. So we'll just put the plus there. And this becomes negative cosine t plus t sine t. And then we have minus one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply t times that because of here. This is still the left hand side. So t times dy dt is going to be negative cosine uh, negative t cosine t plus t squared sine t minus t. So we're going to keep an eye on that for the left hand side. And then we're going to go to the right hand side. And we're going to take y, which is here. So negative t cosine t minus t plus t squared sine t. And we can see this is exactly what we have here. So what is the solution? Now we need to test the um, initial value. And so the initial value says, when t equals pi, y equals zero is what that says. So let's check that out. So we'll do it for the left-hand side. So negative pi cosine of pi plus pi squared sine of pi minus pi. So the initial value. Now, cosine of pi is negative one. Sine of pi is zero. 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 
So it looks like we're going to end up with uh, pi minus pi, which is zero, which is what it should be, zero. We did it. Let's check the other side. Actually, because they're exactly the same, we're going to get zero for both. <laughs> so that's done. So we have verified not just that this is a solution to this differential equation, left side, right side, but also that the initial value uh, also worked for this particular problem. All right, we got one more coming up. Example four. So we're going to verify that all, all members of the family y equals one over x plus c are solutions to this differential equation, y prime equals negative y squared. And then we're going to do an initial value problem. Let's start with part A. So let's start with the left-hand side, which is y prime. And just to be clear, y equals x plus c to the negative first power. So when I do the derivative, I get negative 1 times x plus c to the negative 2 power. And technically, it's times 1 because the, uh, the chain rule here, which ends up being negative 1 over x plus c squared. That's the left-hand side. So let's do the right-hand side, which is negative y squared. So here's y, 1 over x plus c squared. And it looks like we literally end up with 1 over x plus c squared, because 1 squared is just 1. And we can see that they're equal. They're the same. We are doing just fine there. So for part B, we need to verify that initial value problem. Meaning when x equals zero, y equals, it says 0.5, I'm gonna write that as one half, it's the same thing. So let's check that out. So one half equals, so I'm plugging this into here, one over zero plus c. We end up with this, which means C equals two in this case. So our solution here, Y equals one over X plus two is a specific solution in regards to this specific initial value problem here. So there's our, our first introduction to differential equations. And the next video, what we'll be doing is actually solving for them. And then we can do this verification process afterwards.